Hello, art people. Today, we are going to compare and contrast the different ways cultures, different cultures, used alligators slash crocodiles artwork from different times and places. So, we are doing alliteration alligators, and I couldn't find a whole lot of art and art history about alligators, but I did find a lot in crocodiles, and they're very similar. The only difference I could find in them was that crocodiles have teeth on both the top and the bottom that you see in pictures, whereas alligators just have them on the bottom. So, anyway, I found some crocodile artwork. So, this right here, what do you guys think about this? Raise your hand if you want to say how you feel about this artwork. All right. Very good. Who else wants to say something about this artwork? Wow. Okay. Very good. So this is Egyptian. That was the culture. Egyptian. Ancient Egyptian. From 664 to 332 BCE. So that was a super long time ago. And they used this artwork because they actually gave them, these little guys, these little statues, to the gods. So if you guys haven't heard about ancient Egypt yet, they believed in a lot of different gods. Okay? So let's go to this website here. And I'll show you a picture of it a little bit bigger. So that's what it looks like from the side. That's from the front, that's from the side, and that's from the other side. And it is called the Statue of Sobek. And I'll read this to you. It says, here's the crocodile god Sobek, associated with water in the Nile River. He wears an elaborate crown adorned with horns, feathers, and a uraeus, which is a sacred serpent. Egyptian gods were commonly depicted with human bodies and animal heads. The animal referred to the god's personality and characteristics, not his or her appearance. For example, the crocodile head of Sobek alludes to his fierceness. Statues like this were offered to the gods to ask for their help or thanks for their assistance. So that's a really cool one. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, raise your hand if you want to tell me how you feel about this. Okay, very good. Does anybody else want to add something to that? Okay, great. Thank you. So this is also the Egyptian culture. So remember, we're comparing and contrasting different cultures and how they used alligator slash crocodile artwork from different times and places. So this is the same culture and it's first century BCE. And this was used, well, we're not actually sure what this was used for, but what it is is a box. So we think the historians, people who study history for a living, and that's their job, and they do a lot of research and read a lot of books, they think that the Egyptians probably put gifts in there for ceremonial purposes, which we're going to talk about ceremonial art later on. But a ceremony is an event that happens. For instance, a birthday is a ceremony. We use birthday cakes for birthday ceremonies. A wedding is a ceremony. We have we usually have a white dress and a black tuxedo for wedding ceremonies. So there's artwork that we use for ceremonies, and it's called ceremonial art. So they had ceremonies in Egypt. There's all kinds of ceremonies in Egypt. So let's look at this website and see some more views of it. Wow, that looks so cool, right? So here's the back. That's the bottom. And here it is from the top. So you can see it's a box. And here's the beautiful artwork on it. So there he, there's the um, crocodile. It's really cool. It's called Chest with Writing. And the front of the box shows a king making an offering to the crocodile god Sobek. Oh, we just learned about Sobek. Above the scene is an inscription of an demotic. So I think that's the just what they wrote in. Like we wrote in the alpha, like we used the alphabet. I guess they used this. The box may have been used for temple rituals. Okay. All right. Very good. 
You guys are doing a great job paying attention. I'm so proud of you guys. We come to school to learn and you guys are learning. You're letting your brain grow by paying attention. You're doing so good. All right. We've got two more pieces of art to look at, okay? You guys just hang in there. Now, this is a different culture. This is actually from a German artist. So we're going to Germany now. And this was done in the 17th century. So a different culture, a different time. And raise your hand if you want to say how you feel about this artwork. What do you think about it? All right. Thank you. And who else wants to say something about the artwork? Wow. Very good. Thank you. And who else wants to say something about this artwork? Very good. Thank you, guys. So I'll read this to you. The use for this artwork. So this was used, um, well, it was so the artist named Maria, it was so she could study this out well this crocodile when she got home see maria was so cool she's one of my favorite artists and she was one of the very first um female scientists she was a scientist too and this was a long time ago before they had cameras so you know how scientists will take pictures of animals and then they take them back to their labs and study the pictures and learn about the animals and look at what kind of scales they have, what kind of feathers they might have, and they look at the animals to study them and learn about them by looking at them. Well, this was drawn before there was cameras. So Maria, she was so talented. She actually was an artist and a scientist. So she would go on big adventures and she would draw the animals while she was there. That way she could go home and study the animals. And other people could study them too based on her artwork. So really, really cool. All right, and there's another artist that this is actually our artist that we're um, focusing on for this lesson. We always have an artist connection. And our artist connection for this lesson is John Singer Sargent. And this is his painting called Muddy Crocodiles. All right, and we'll talk about that painting a little bit more later. All right, thank you guys so much for being so good and paying attention to this slideshow. I'm so proud of you. Let's get back to doing some art.